This is an NE555 multifunction waveform generator kit. I got this from AliExpress for the grand total of 78 pence, and I thought it'd be a really nice kit for us to go ahead and assemble today. So if we unwrap the bubble wrap packaging, we can have a little look to see what's inside. And we have a little bag here of components. Let's have a look inside the bag. And we have a little instruction leaflet. This gives us our list of components and a nice schematic diagram as well. So I might need to refer to this during assembly. We also have our PCB with some nice silk screen on it so we can see exactly what we need to do, where we need to put each of the components. And this is the track side as well. There we go. In the bag, we have the rest of our components. Let's have a little look. And what do we have here? So we have some pin headers. These allow us to configure which mode we would like to be in. We have a little jumper here for those headers. We have a socket and an NE555 chip, so that's quite nice. We have a socket for that as well. Quite a few resistors. Let's just sort through these here. So there's a few in little groups and there's a couple of loose ones as well. We've got oh, two electrolytic capacitors, a variable resistor, two transistors, uh, another loose resistor, and a few different types of ceramic capacitors. And I'm sure there's several values here. So let's uh, shift everything out of the way and we'll put our PCB here in the middle. So as usual, I'm going to use my cheap Kana Kana solder. Um, works perfectly good perfectly well and I have my soldering iron here which I haven't turned on yet so we need to turn it on and begin the heating up process. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble this and I'll probably put some music in the background for you and when I've finished we will go ahead and hopefully test our board.
so I finished assembly and I think we'll move on to testing now. You'll see that I've actually replaced the header on this left hand side with um, wires instead so I'll hook that up to a power supply. I'm not sure the exact voltage required but we'll work that out in a second so let me just set up for testing. So I've gone ahead and connected my oscilloscope here and I've just taken the ground off one of a little flying lead to make sure these two don't short out. If I go ahead and attach the power here, let's see if we are getting anything on the display. Well, we see some kind of faint ripple here. So if I just adjust the settings slightly, say like this. Okay, so we have some kind of square wave here. So we uh, try and reduce this a little bit more. There we go. And now we can see we have a very poor square wave, but a square wave nonetheless. And we have about 910 hertz and a 50% duty cycle. So we can try out the different modes here. So if I move this one along to the next connection point, there we go, we have some kind of sawtooth wave. Here, we have a bit of a ripply wave there. Let me see if I can adjust. Oh, there we go, that's a... Bit of a triangular wave. If I just adjust this, you can see there's definitely a triangular shape to this one. And if I pop this in here, oh, and uh, maybe again adjust, there we go, we have a sine wave. So we're using our little uh, 555 timer. We also have the adjustment potentiometer or variable resistor here. So I'm just gonna use my tweezers here, which is really not the right tool for the job. It'd be nice to have some insulated tool, but let's just see what happens. When I, when I tweak this. Okay. So we can see here this is adjusting the amplitude, which um, might be interesting. So we saw on the triangle wave, for example, if we just, uh, there we go. So it's quite noisy here, but, um, oh yeah, so we can tweak our, tweak our triangle wave to different amplitudes. Should we go back to the square wave? Let's see what's going on here. Again, let's just adjust the, well, that's, that's uh, off the charts. There we go. Adjust that and um, there we go. Okay, so that's at 0.1 volt. So we see we have a, a, a peak to peak of a half a volt there. And so I'm currently powering this on six volts. So, it's interesting, I'm getting 915 or so hertz. It's a little annoying actually that I this is adjusting the amplitude rather than the frequency, because I was gonna use this in a project which required a particular frequency that isn't 915 hertz. But nonetheless, I thought this was a really interesting kit and definitely worth the 78 pence I paid for it. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you again in the next one.